Hey, it's Mike here, and today we're gonna do a vegan science roundup. Again, new hot off the press studies. We have one on creatine, we have one on cognitive decline, and we have a bunch of other interesting studies. We have an environmental study. We also have a study looking at the proteomics, which is the protein markers of vegans, a more advanced measure of those. And this might be the most unhinged spot I've ever filmed, because here we are, amazing sunset here in Greece. That's the Temple of Apollo, also known as the Portara in Naxos, Greece, and I'm on the edge of a cliff right here. <laughs> so hopefully uh, I don't drop my camera, but I'm gonna try to set it down and get going. Let's go. And this is the last time again I'll be filming in Greece. My Greece trips are almost over here and they've been freaking amazing. And so yeah, once again, stay tuned for that video coming out in a week or so. But yeah, once again, this is a video where there's a bunch of interesting new studies that come out that you know probably don't need their own 10 minute video, but I really wanna tell you guys about anyway. They're really interesting, so let's get to the first one. Let's start with our food science one right off the bat. It's on vegan cheese and how people feel about it. And the results are probably not that surprising. Vegan cheese still has a little bit of a way to go, but I will say it's only gonna get better when on the other hand, cow cheese is just gonna stay the same. They ask people what desirable and undesirable qualities vegan cheese had and they say, quote, cheesy, creamy, buttery, and soft were desirable attributes when served cold and melted for both plant-based styles. Undesirable attributes included gritty, rubbery, artificial, and off flavor. <laughs> yeah, so I don't think we want gritty vegan cheese out there. I mean, maybe somebody wants that. You know, maybe if there was a little bit of grit and some really fancy French cheese out there, that's what people would be looking for, but uh, they're not currently looking for that. Another detail, cheese melted in in a quesadilla performed better than cold cheese shreds, who would have thought? Anyway, we can move on to the next study, which is this one on personal sustainability of diet. And this isn't a fully vegan study. This is sort of like your halfway get in the door study where they looked at what would happen if people shift to a more plant-based diet, they replace about two-thirds of the meat that they consumed, and the answer is pretty obvious. And this is a randomized trial. It's called the My Planet Diet Randomized Control Trial, and they shifted protein sources to things like bean, peas, and lentils, and their overall dietary quality score went up. There were no adverse effects. And whoop de doo who would have guessed it? Quote, personalized sustainable dietary advice led to healthier diets and lower diet-related greenhouse gas emissions with no short-term negative health effects. And I just had to add to that by saying, hey, well, here's the chart if you actually go fully vegan and you can kick even more butt like Captain Planet. I just woke up from a nap, so my voice is deeper. <laughs> All right, now let's hop into this randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial on vegans and vegetarians given creatine, and they measured some biometrics such as lean mass and weight. And as you might expect, those increase. Annoyingly, this is one where they also clumped vegans and vegetarians together, but as you probably know, we make our own creatine and it can be given as a supplement, which hopefully improves performance, but also can hold a bit of water. So while it's in meat, it's still not enough in that diet to get performance enhancing. So omnivores take it as a supplement as well, but our results here are after taking creatine four times a day for seven days, so a bit more than your average person might take, or a maltodextrin placebo, they found that the creatine group increased body mass by 1.5 kilograms and fat-free mass, which includes muscle, by 1.15 kilograms, while the placebo group showed no changes. And the creatine group had also increased muscle creatine levels, as you would expect. So, ew. so yeah, creatine appears to work on vegan of vegetarians as we already knew. All right, now let's move on to this next study, which I think is the most interesting, but it's really technical. So I was like, people probably don't wanna go too deep into this. I know some of you do, but this is the proteomic study. They looked at some advanced protein markers that are associated with more or less disease in vegans in particular. And you might be wondering, what is a proteome? Well, it is a complete set of proteins expressed by an organism. The term can also be used to describe the assortment of proteins produced at a specific time in the particular cell or tissue type. And the study found several proteins to be higher in vegans than those meat eaters. As you can see from this chart, vegans break away from the pack on several protein biomarkers. And we could just go through a few. GUCA2A is associated with better gut health. We're talking about lower Crohn's and lower colorectal cancer risk. Higher FGF21 is associated with lower BMI, more favorable lipid profiles and lower heart disease risk. Then we have DSG2, again, is higher in people that do not eat meat and is associated with lower bowel disease risk. All right, now we have another one that's a little bit hopeful in the realm of the total number of vegans because we've been getting just a frustrating amount of anti-vegan stuff lately and like all oh, veganism is failing, blah, blah, blah. Well, it's nice to have a larger picture from this German study that I mentioned out of Bavaria. It found that over the last 20 years, looking 
looking at vegetarians and vegans combined, so people that do not eat meat, we see a three-fold increase in this group over the last 20 years, which is like, you know, bigger picture, pretty amazing. And in particular, quote, the prevalence of vegetarian slash vegan diets increased from 2.2 to 6.3%. All right, now we have a couple reviews that are interesting and their findings are just positive and one has to do with skin aging and phytochemicals. Of course, they mentioned your typical phytochemicals that could be good for skin oxidative stress, you know, such as mangiferin, lutein, curcumin, and resveratrol, but they also mentioned ones that could be good for collagen as well, and they say that compounds such as quercetin, apigenin, and gingerol, which is from ginger, also demonstrate inhibitory activity against collagenase and elastase, preserving skin integrity and function. So yeah, these are enzymes that over time break down collagen and elastase, which make your skin flexible, prevent wrinkles, and keep you looking young. And it appears that these are phytochemicals, among others that I've covered in the past, like those in Centella, that could decrease aging, which is awesome. And then we have another review, which I found a bit refreshing, because a lot of times we have these even meat-funded studies saying, hey, people on a vegan diet have worse mental health, and so there's discouraging headlines in that area, but this review is actually saying the opposite. They're saying, quote, participants following plant-based diets showed mental health benefits, including reduced anxiety, depression, and healthier eating behaviors. Diets high in fiber and antioxidants were linked to lower stress, while processed plant-based diets were associated with worsened mood symptoms. So yeah, you're going to feel better if you're eating more whole foods as opposed to a bunch of processed junk. And then they went on to make a, a little bit of a warning comment here saying risks of orthorexia nervosa were noted among individuals adopting vegan diets for health reasons. Well, that's technically a plant-based diet, not an ethical vegan diet, whereas ethical motivations appeared to be protective. So people maybe have a bit of a better relationship with food. I've talked about orthorexia nervosa in the past a bit and, and it's sort of been used to attack a vegan diet. I think it's an issue if people have essentially anorexia in any type of diet, but we have seen even lower eating disorder rates in the vegan population from studies like this one. So, you know, I don't think it could be used to straight up take veganism down or people that are eating plant-based diets. But of course, people who are looking to restrict their diet and choosing a plant-based diet to do so could have an increased risk of eating disorder behavior. Anyway, we can move on to the next study, which is on cognitive processing. This one looking at plant protein intake versus animal protein intake. We looked at 1,300 adults who were middle-aged or older, 55 or older, and, and they're wondering, is there some type of correlation between the type of protein, whether animal or plant-based, and their cognitive decline? And they looked at that in terms of things like processing speed, and the results were... So firstly, higher quartiles of protein intake overall were associated with lower episodic memory, so worse memory and faster decline in global cognition and processing speed. And this is interesting because what is the type of protein that people are really fixating on generally? It's animal protein, but we get to figure out which protein is responsible here and the results are. Animal protein, animal-based protein intake was associated with faster decline in processing speed. Well, plant-based protein intake was associated with higher processing speed. Well, and additionally, there was a negative animal-based intake association with executive functioning in one model as well as a lower memory in one relationship for plant-based protein. So mixed results here, but with the background of literature, seeing multiple studies showing better memory with plant-based diets, better cognitive decline results as well. It makes sense that the researchers conclude that, quote, these findings support current recommendations to shift toward more plant-based protein sources. All right, well, I hope you found those studies interesting. It's nice to just keep on top of the literature, checking PubMed and seeing what is on the most recent under vegan as well as plant-based is how I find those generally. The sun appears to be going down in beautiful Greece. So again, stay tuned for that video. I'm excited to edit it. Everybody on the trips was amazing and we had a blast. Looking at ruins, going to the water, all that stuff. And once again, I actually started my own travel company. A lot of people don't know that. It's called Vigo Travel. And you can just link to the future trip list below. However, everybody loves these trips so much that people on previous trips have been filling up the trips. So you got to stay on top of it. Let me know down below what you thought about these studies. Feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Ooh, and that's it for today. Wow, look at this. This is insane. That's what I was potentially going to fall down. But I didn't. So off to dinner. <laughs>